Hello everyone, it's that time of year again and we are off on our European holiday and this time we are going to be going to four countries. We will be going to... We are going to four yeah. countries. Sort of. sort of we're going through switzerland so we're not staying in switzerland that's one of them anyway so we're going to four countries we are having a week in france and that will be in annecy and we will be stopping halfway uh, there on the first day annecy for a week then through switzerland and then second week in germany in lake constance and then on the way home we'll be stopping for a night in belgium so four countries over two and a bit weeks Throw in some Austria as well because we're on the Austrian bordering gym. Maybe Austria as well. Maybe five countries. We'll wait and see. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're at uh, Dover. We are on 50%. And we're going to be mainly using the Tesla network this time. First stop, probably be I honestly, though. Um, just going to give you a recap on how the, uh, the network's holding up this year. Uh, stay with us. <laughs> so dark. <laughs> So we're just unloading at Calais. Um, just thought I'd mention that it's Saturday the 17th of August. Um, so prime school holiday territory. So it's a proper stress test of the uh, charging network. We're gonna aim to go to a Ionity charger first because if we aimed for a Tesla supercharger, it would be like just outside of the port. So we've got 50%, we wanna get going. So we're gonna do an Ionity charge on uh, the motorway first and then uh, it will probably be um, Tesla chargers from then on in. So first uh, rapid charge of the holiday is an Ionity one over there. We're the only one charging. One was here when we got it there. Um, we, we've stopped here two years ago and really got slow speed, um, but it's, it's up to full speed already on this one. Better route planner said that we would arrive with 10% and then exactly what we got. Um, the uh, guesser meter was dropping really quickly because it's getting used to the 130 kilometer uh, roads, uh, but it seems to have stabilized a bit now. We're going up to 60% just to get us to the Tesla supercharger, which will be the second one and the last one of the day. So um, I've taken over for a little bit as Mike's uh, driving. We've just left Chantefleury, which is on the outskirts of Reims or Reims and um, we charged at the Tesla superchargers there. There were about 26 superchargers, which is quite a lot really. So we didn't have any trouble whatsoever finding a space. Um, supermarket was still open, so we took the opportunity to do a bit of shopping, so we won't have to do it as much on our first day on our, um, when we get to the campsite we're staying at. Ionity were there as well. Oh, also, the Ionity chargers were there too. And two years ago, we actually stopped in the same place and used the Ionity chargers instead. This year, when we compared, because we've got a Tesla membership, the Tesla chargers were a little bit cheaper. So obviously, this time we went for those ones. <coughs> so... Destination chargers and idle fees. The car was not going to be charged before bedtime and needed to be moved, otherwise we would get about nine euros worth of uh, idle fees overnight. Each hour, sorry, nine euros each hour. Um, so just before bed, I have to go out and piss and rain to go and unplug the car at 80% instead of leaving it to 100% in the morning. Idle fees on seven kilowatt chargers. Your thoughts, please. Okay, so we had a bit of trouble uh, getting the charge started at that fastnet. Never used fastnet before, um, but the first two cables we tried wouldn't start. There was a communication error, but the third one worked. Just took a bit of time. Took about ten minutes to get it started, which is a bit of a shame. Um, we only were supposed to really charge up to fifty percent. Uh, to get us to the Tesla charger because there wasn't a Tesla charger on route really um, so we, we used that instead um, but because we were having dinner uh, we ended up charging all the way up to 80% um, so it was probably a bit more expensive because that was 50 cents where the Tesla charger is uh, 39 cents but uh, never mind it was worth it because we were able to eat and uh, charge at the same time. 
There was only four uh, charging bays there. Uh, only one was in use uh, when we got there at Porsche Taycan. But by the time we left, all of them were in use. Uh, but no one else seemed to be having problems charging on all the ones that we had trouble with. So um, it seemed to be a car issue rather than a charger issue. So we are at um, a Tesla supercharger site near Lake Geneva. There's 18 stalls. Uh, when we got here, there was about five free, but uh, I think they didn't like the size of a non-Tesla. So they all disappeared shortly afterwards and there was like about 12 free then. Um, we're about an hour away from our um, site, campsite for the, uh, for the next week. Uh, it's been quite wet weather, but uh, the range has been doing fine. And we're going to charge to about 80% here, which we don't need 80%. We'll get there with plenty, but we don't know if there's a charger at the site, at the campsite or not. So we're just going to put in up to 80% just to be sure that we've got enough for the week. It's Sunday 25th of August and we're on our middle day of the holiday where we're going to be driving from our first campsite in Annecy, France to our next campsite which is in uh, Germany It's in Lindau Which is in Lindau So we're currently in Switzerland uh, on the outskirts of Bern uh, charging at a Tesla supercharger which has got a handy uh, shopping mall right next to it which we don't need any of the uh, food eateries there because we're just needing the toilet but we're having our packed lunch in the car charging up to 80 percent which we don't really need to but we're eating so we may as well charge while we're here and then we've got one more charge stop uh just before we leave switzerland um and that will be all we need for the day we were able to charge up the first campsite, so we left uh, on the morning with 100%, which was great. Uh, we did have one little incident uh, during the first week where our 12 volt battery went flat. Again, on, well, say again. We had it first on our uh, Hyundai Ionic, um, and we needed to jump start it, and we've had it now with the Hyundai Kona, and we've had to jump start it, luckily. Even though I'd taken the jump leads out, which was really stupid, I was trying to save space for the holiday. Um, the neighbour opposite had his jump lead, so petrol car jump start an electric car, which feels really stupid. Um, so I'm really going to look at investing in one of those um, lithium ion uh, jump start packs just to keep in the car. We had got um, European breakdown cover, but it had taken so long to organise and get them out when we just asked a few neighbours and someone had got jump leads, so we were able to sort it out. But um, yeah, the, the 12 volt situation and how they go flat in Hyundai's and a few other brands is really a bit stupid. Um, we think we might have left the boot slightly open um, so that we think it was only for a few hours but we think that the light may have stayed on in the boot and the LCD screen stays on uh, and that was enough to drain the 12 volt really weird anyway uh, it's gonna be a, a good five hour and a half six hour day today uh, we're gonna stop off and burn now and have a look round before heading on we've stopped at burn for a bit um, we were going to stop at another supercharger so that we could arrive at the campsite with say 30% left just so that we've got a bit of margin to go places to start with because we don't know if there's a charger on site. Uh, but we've noticed that there's a Tesla supercharger close to the campsite and because we've hit such a lot of traffic on the way um, we're just going to go straight there because we've got to get to the campsite by 7 o'clock to make sure we're checked in in time. Um, so we're just going to get straight there. We might stop to use the loose at some point and we might use a charger if there happens to be one there if and it's a reasonable price but we just need to get straight here. So we've had a nice day out in uh, Switzerland, been up a, a cable car, um, I forgot what it was called, what was it? Was... Santis. San Santis, Santis Mountain Cable Car today and we uh, that was in Switzerland we're back over in Austria now, a uh, quick rapid charge at a Tesla supercharger because the campsite has got destination chargers, um, but they're like 65 cents a kilowatt in comparison to here in Austria, which is 38 pence a kilowatt. So, but we're gonna get going now, we're up to 54% and that will do for now. Oh, it's wicked, it's got like a pizza vending machine, it's got a, a lounge and there's absolutely shed loads free. So it's our last day in Germany today and um, we've got a long travel day up through uh, into Belgium tomorrow, it's about 415 miles. So we need to be fully charged before we set off. Um, decided to use the K2 
camping, uh, the campsites charges, which are 59 pence a kilowatt hour. I mean, the, if you're penny pinching, you could drive two miles down the road to use the uh, Tesla superchargers, which are a good 20 pence cheaper a kilowatt hour. But then you've got to sit there and wait. So I'd rather sort of not waste uh, time, enjoy the uh, campsite for the last day, go swimming and enjoy the place rather than uh, sit waiting around. So uh, yeah, enjoy the last day and then a long day tomorrow. So we're on our long travel day from Germany through Luxembourg into Belgium. Uh, so 400 miles. We just had our first uh, supercharger stop of the day. We've got two today. Um, we stopped at a uh, supercharger for, um, well it said we'd be there for about 50 minutes but we weren't anywhere near that long uh, because we'd used a lot less um, charge than expected on the uh, first leg. So the supercharger was in Karlsruhe and uh, there was 11 bays, one was uh, faulty. Um, so we had a five minute wait before we could plug in, which is the first time of the holiday that we've had to actually wait to charge. There was then uh, two other people joined the queue behind us, uh, but then three left all at the same time and we all plugged in pretty much at the same time. By the time we left, there was uh, several uh, charging spots available, uh, so didn't have to wait long at all. Our next stop will be in Belgium after we've gone through Luxembourg, uh, and that will just be about a 20 minute charge. So we're at our second supercharger stop of the day, which will be the last one, which is a, um, it's called Arlon in Belgium. Uh, there's 30 bays, about half were full, uh, so plenty of space available. It's a very welcoming hotel with a, um, with a, a self-serve shop and toilets. Um, it's a very nice hotel, kind of starting to think maybe we should have uh, stayed here instead, but we've got about another hour and a half left until our um, journey finishes for the day. Um, probably only need about 50, which we're about at now, to get to the hotel uh, with a safe 10% uh, and there's destination charges at the hotel. So we're all checked in at Calais. Um, there's about two hour delay on all the boats today and uh, it's probably a good job because uh, there's about an hour queue for any food here. Forgot to do a little video at the last supercharger which was at uh, Dunkirk which was at a supermarket where we loaded up on wine. We charged there for about 20 minutes, there was about 11 stalls and all were free when we got there. Um, we'll do another charge stop in Luton at a supercharger before heading home to Nottingham. Uh, but it's going to be a bit late by then, so I'm not sure if we'll do another video, but I'll do a roundup if I don't get a chance to do the video at Luton. A silly little side note, but after thousands of miles, uh, a charge port on the front of the car should look kind of like that. Not very nice to touch. So we're now in Luton. It's quarter past ten. The ferry was really delayed, like three and a half hour delayed. So we're going to get home about midnight and we're knackered. And there's planes flying overhead. On the upside, uh, unlike what the uh, app said um, when I first logged on, when they said there was a 10 minute wait, it refreshed and actually there was only two people here. So uh, yeah, it's all good. We're up to 51% and actually we, we could be going now. We're just waiting for wife and daughter to get back from the toilet at McDonald's and then we're going to get on our way home. So we're now about a month after the holiday. Night's drawing in, it's raining, just about got over the post-holiday blues. But let's have a recap of the uh, holiday, shall we? Uh, so we went through France, stayed in France, then went through Switzerland, Austria, Germany, um, spent a bit of time in Germany, went back in Switzerland a bit, and then went through Luxembourg, stayed in Belgium, and then back to France and in the UK, but six countries in total, 2,230 miles. I did forget to reset the trip until about 30 miles into the uh, into the trip. But over that distance, we averaged four miles to the kilowatt hour, which is not too shabby. We stopped and charged at uh, 13 rapid charging stops over the two and a bit weeks. Sounds quite a bit, but usually it was like two a day, one was three a day. We stopped for one rapid charger just to save a bit of money. Um, and overall that was, was 10 Tesla superchargers, two Ionities and one Fastnet. The Fastnet was the one that was uh, being a bit funny and not working. It was the only charger over the entire holiday that 
was a bit faulty, but we got it working in the end. All the others were, were fine. We got it working straight away. We waited to charge at one charger over the entire trip um five minute queue at one tesla we did uh wait to charge another time um when we we're just trying to save that money so overall over the two and a bit weeks we were waiting for the car 25 minutes the rest of the time we were busy doing other things it didn't really take us any longer than it would have done even if we we're in a petrol car because we would have been stopping anyway so costs wise um, it's, if I factoring all of them, including the destination charges, were a little bit more expensive, uh, but worth it for the convenience. It was £230 overall. If I was to do a similar trip in the Qashqai, it would have been about double that. So pretty good value for money overall. Do it again, most definitely. So that's it. Any questions, just drop us a comment. I'm always replying to comments. Give us a like and we'll see you for a heat pump video next. See ya.